Today I want to talk about this book that for me is one of the best books to learn perspective out there, uh, especially if you want to learn how to draw scenes, uh, architecture, uh, storyboards, layouts and everything. Uh, Marcos Mateo Mestre is one of the biggest names in the animation industry, uh, focusing a lot on layouts uh, and scene planning uh, and, and everything, uh, storyboarding as well. Uh, this is one that he did for uh, the Prince of Egypt. Uh, I did a video on that uh, as well here on the channel. Uh, so you can check that out. The link's gonna be in the description. His work is really great. And his educational methods uh, are also um, really good. So that's what we're gonna talk about. His biggest book is called Framed Inc. Uh, it started with composition uh, and scene, scene planning, layout and everything. Uh, so you definitely should check that out as well. Uh, but on this one, he's gonna focus on perspective construction. Let's jump into the details for uh, the contents of the book. Uh, I will always like to go uh, through them first. Uh, so basically he starts with fundamentals uh, and uh, concepts uh, for like what's horizon line, what's a vanishing point and so on and so forth. Then jumps into convergency uh, in like the flat space uh, and what that looks like. Construction of the cube uh, that is really interesting that he goes more in the visual perception route and not the construction route. We saw a lot of the construction work in Scott Robertson's book, How to Draw. I also have a, vid a video for that here in the channel uh, and uh, he, on the other hand, like Marcos uh, focuses a lot on uh, how to build a cube from uh, your perception of what the proportions of a cube are. I think that's great. That's hard as well. Uh, so take your time. Uh, it will be a build up. If you have like square shapes uh, like dice uh, or boxes that are square, uh, it, it's going to be nice to draw them from observation so that you can have a better view uh, and a better understanding down the line of what a cube looks in uh, the tr tr three-dimensional space. Uh, two, two vanishing points, so two-point perspective, multiple vanishing points. So he's also talking about two-point perspective, but a lot of like different uh, angles. Uh, 90 degree angles and, and how that's changing. Uh, also not uh, 90 degree angles as we're gonna see in some examples. Uh, three point perspective with three vanishing points uh, and, and, and that's like adding the two vanishing points set up with uh, looking up or down with the camera. Inclined planes that they will converge as well but for uh, to uh, an auxiliary vanishing point uh, above the horizon line uh, even if you are looking straight to the horizon line parallel to the ground so uh, we're gonna see some examples as well bending the line uh, finally uh, on chapter 8 he gets to ellipses uh, so it's great to see that he uh, he took his time uh, to get there uh, and then like got uh, really uh, on on that side uh, elevation and uh, plan. Uh, I, I think that's great on a concept level and not on a on a construction uh, way. I think that was used a lot in architecture back in the day to do perspective views of of uh, plan views and elevations. Uh, but now I think it's more of a, a tool uh, to set things up. If if you look at the video I did for a one year guide to learning to draw. Uh, Elevations have their place, like front views, when you're doing like level variations for a, an architecture, for example, uh, it's gonna be super uh, important, but uh, I, I think it comes down also to a lot of techniques uh, and, and it can get too technical if you go the route of the architecture. So uh, beware of that uh, in this book. I think does a little more than it should in terms of the technical transferring of plan views and not uh, thinking more on, on, on how to transfer that as Scott Robertson does on how to draw. Uh, I, I think he is more uh, concise and, and, and practical in, in the information that he, he conveys. Uh, lenses, uh, pretty quick uh, pass through lenses. 
uh, and then like some notes both on uh, freehand drawing and sketching and composition. Uh, so jumping in uh, some pages so that we can have more uh, like a visual example. As I said before, like picture plane, all the concepts of what the horizon line will look like, things that you're looking down on and up to, uh, and, and, and start getting like all the, the info in there so that you can understand what you're seeing without getting too technical on those. I think that's great, very practical, so easy, easy to use, easy to approach, hard to master. Uh, then like goes to flat uh, and square surfaces, as I said, like uh, explaining conversions, parallel lines uh, that converge to the same vanishing point. They are parallel in the plan view, but they converge in perspective. I think that's like the basics, the start of everything. Then the cube, uh, the cube, as I said before, more on a perception level. Um, so uh, once again, like looking up at something that is above the horizon line and looking down uh, on something that is below the horizon line. Uh, the same here, uh, horizon line, center, vision, uh, and construction. I think everyone that did any exercise in perspective did something like this. So it comes in this book as well. Um, so yeah, uh, once again, down plane, uh, up plane, conversions, uh, repetition, uh, and like transferring off scale in perspective. Uh, so all great tools that will help you along the way. Uh, once you rotate the cube, uh, in this case, in a, 40, a 45 degree angle, like you get to a two point perspective setup. So that's what he is try, uh, bringing uh, here. Uh, also, this, uh, this uh, chapter goes into division uh, and Marcus has great tools for dividing planes uh, in perspective. Uh, this is one of them and a lot of other examples uh, throughout the book. Uh, very practical, very easy to use, um, just as some that we saw in the How to Draw book by Scott Robertson. Uh, I, I think the, the big, uh, the, both those books, uh, these and How to Draw, they complement, uh, th their content is uh, additive, so uh, you should study both of them to have a very complete view. I use both of them as textbooks for teaching uh, hundreds of students in, in basic perspective. So I know what I'm saying here. Uh, you learn a lot of volumes from how to draw and you learn a lot of scene planning and construction uh, through frame perspective. So I think that's the biggest uh, take. Uh, so back to the book, uh, vanishing points again, uh, when they are off the page, what should I do? So we saw also some constructions uh, in how to draw a book. Uh, and here there are some techniques as well. Uh, so using like the X to find the midway uh, when you're building something that is uh, complex uh, and getting all the way to building furniture and all of that using simple boxes. Uh, th this is a great approach. You should definitely check uh, test that. Uh, there are lots of tutorials as well, placing boxes in a scene and planning with boxes. Uh, even the video game industry uses that a lot, like gray boxing uh, to understand environments as a whole and then add details and start like really uh, diving deeper on what the, the final looks going to be. Uh, if you rotate the box or the cube in, in different directions in the same scene, you end up with this multiple vanishing points. This is hard to build, to be honest, because understanding where the points of conversion will be when you don't have uh, all the formal construction, if you have the formal construction and you can find like the station point and all of that, it's, it becomes easier. But I, I really think there is a lot of value in trying to do this uh, from your visual perception. If you have like dice or boxes, as I said before, at home and you can pile them up and do observational drawing, uh, that will go a long way. Even using like verticals and horizontals to understand what direction the angles are going, uh, that will help a lot uh, informing your visual perception on what that uh, final result will look like and through time you will definitely get better and better in doing like this freehand uh, without formal construction. Uh, the same like here uh, with cars uh, in a parking lot 
what that looks like when you have uh, and and what about when one of the cars is like parked the wrong way or something like that it can start being chaotic and, and interesting to understand how to solve that problem i think it's all about how to solve uh, your problems in a simple way so that you can build with the right uh structure um so really good when you're looking up or down uh to something you have both uh, the 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 vanishing points like this is a one point situation with uh, a, a three point uh, because you have this being like parallel and not converging or uh, sim like co converging slightly to to a point uh, in the horizon line that's going to be down below uh, when you're looking up so if you look up horizon below if you look down horizon is going up uh, and m most of the times out of the page so here is the horizon line here is the frame of the page uh, so it, it will happen a lot uh, inclined planes as I said before uh, they are converging to a point that is over the horizon line it is the same like two-point perspective here uh, but if you have a plane that is res uh, related to this two-point perspective uh, that is inclined, the conversion will be to a point above uh, the vanishing point called uh, auxiliary vanishing point. Uh, this is super, super useful when you're building uh, staircases. So uh, a lot of great information here. As I said, uh, in, in the contents, uh, chapter eight goes to ellipses and their construction. Uh, they, they have... Uh, he has a, a simple construction here, uh, but it's hard to master, like understanding the relationship with minor axes and, and everything. Uh, I really like the approach on how to draw in this case, uh, using a square uh, to make sure that everything is going to the right place. Uh, so that should be interesting to take a look as well. Building domes as well as round bridges and, and all the construction. You can see the, the ellipse here. Uh, all the way to, to really find uh, what that's gonna look like and almost like the cylinder that goes around that so that you can really build that in, in, in a very informed way in the final illustration. And we even saw this uh, illustration uh, in here. So this is the same bridge. This is the final illustration for, for that bridge. Uh, last but not least like the elevations as i said before uh i i think this is too technical for what for what we need right now uh in terms of uh the moment in in, in history we wa we are so we can use like 3d methods if we need very uh precise construction uh, we don't need uh, most of this construction at least in my opinion I would love to hear your thoughts uh, in the comments below uh, lenses uh, a as I said like if you go more into this kind of direction getting closer uh, to objects you might need to go with like a, 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 a more broad lens more fisheye kind of approach and you start bending the lines of convergency you get like circular perspective and all of that. Kim Jung Gi was a great uh, user of this kind of uh, perception. Uh, it was mostly on perception base, uh, but using that to draw wide uh, shots of, of places uh, from the inside and not from far away. A normal like 50 millimeter lens that is closer to our view, a uh, human eyesight uh, and, and a long lens, uh, very uh, like telescopic it will flat perspective different from this one that perspective will get really skewed and uh uh distorted uh so proportions will be really distorted uh, on this one it will be more natural and on this one it will be flat so you get something a house that is built on on, on a basis that looks like this and here can even be like the horizon line uh, and, and the construction be like that, Re really flat, uh, because you're super far away, but you're zooming in. So something that is really small, really close to the horizon, you're zooming in and looking uh, at that really closely. Uh, I, I really love this uh, this chapter on uh, observational drawing. I think that should be <laughs> chapter one uh, and, and, and not chapter 11. I think it, it should be like, before you go in, uh, develop your angle uh, reading uh, uh, excuse 
so that when you get to a point where you are trying to understand convergency, uh, you are better uh, equipped with those cues to really go out there and, and see how that works in, in reality. Uh, I understand that you need to pass through all of that to really understand what's happening here and why it's happening. And you will have a second round of understanding uh, uh, overall, but uh, I, I think this is the basis. You can always like go in cycles uh, and, and really, uh, you will come back to observational drawing and then like more construction observation and, and so on and so forth. Uh, and finally, last but not least, like uh, notes on composition and, and analyzing the compositions that he did for this book speci specifically uh, in, a, in an approach similar to what he did on uh, his Framed Inc. Uh, series. So yeah, that's it uh, for today. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the, the, this uh, book. I would love to hear uh, if you buy the book, uh, what's your favorite part? What, some, what were some of the challenges with studying that? We can have a conversation uh, in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, you probably will enjoy my one year guide uh, for learning how to draw. Uh, I'll have a link on your screen. Uh, you can jump to that or my how to draw uh, review uh, of the book also in the description below. So yeah, I uh, hope you enjoyed the video uh, and have a great day. I'll see you in the next video.